What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So piggybacking on the Linux file system video that I put out last week, to be a competent Linux user, among other things, you also really need to understand file permissions. This was another area that I struggled in as a new developer on my first Linux system trying to sudo everything. So in this video, I'm gonna teach it to you in five minutes. And when you're done, I have a free cheat sheet for you below in the description that you can print out and hang by your desk. Let's get started. Every file and directory in your Linux system will have three permission groups. There's Owner, which are permissions for who owns this file or directory. Group, permissions that apply to the group assigned to the file or directory. And others, permissions that all the other users have. And you'll have to be diligent to protect this one. So if you're the owner, you get certain permissions. If you're the assigned group, you get certain permissions. And then everyone else gets permissions. Now I hate theory only, so let's open up an Ubuntu Linux terminal and run an ls with the L flag, which gives us more detail. And we see a directory named files in two files, main.py and myconfig.yaml. But we have all this other gibberish here that we usually gloss over. Well, don't. This info is very important for a secure system. So again, we have three types of permission groups, owner, group, and others. And each permission group gets three permissions, read, write, and execute. They can read the contents, write or modify the contents, or execute a file, or in the case of the directory, list the files in it. So in our example of the files directory above, we can see this. This gibberish here, drwx, rwx, r dash x, means something. And we can break it down here. First, we have this D. That D simply stands for directory. If there's a dash here, it's a file. Next, we have rwx. This is for the owner. What can the owner do on this directory? Well, the owner, Ubuntu, as you'll see the first name here, can read, write, and execute on this directory. Then you have another set, which is also RWX, which corresponds to the group. Anyone in this group has these permissions, read, write, and execute on this directory. So the first name here is gonna be the owner, the second name is gonna be the group, and anyone in the Ubuntu group can read, write, and execute on this directory. And finally, what can all other users do? Well, they can read and execute only, they can't write. So when you're not given a privilege, you get this dash. So we get R dash X. Read, can't write, but you can execute. Now let's look at an actual file instead of a directory. This is a bit trickier. So here in our gibberish, we can actually break it down to dash, RW dash, RW dash, R dash dash. So the dash means it's a file, not a directory. For our owner permissions, we get RW dash, meaning the owner can read, write, but not execute. For our group, we get the same thing, read, write, can't execute. And for all the other users, they can only read this file. So now that you know the permissions, how do you change them? Well, you have one of two commands. The first one we'll look at is C-H-O-W-N. Some people say chone, but it means changing owner. So if we look back at our example, let's say we want to change the owner to Travis, which is another user on this Linux machine. And maybe we want to change the group to Travis Media. To change the owner, we just run C-H-O-W-N, this command, with the new owner, Travis, in the file name or directory we want to apply this to. So if I go back to my terminal, I need to start out with sudo and then the command chown, and then I want to change the owner to Travis, and then the file name, which is myconfig.yaml. And if I do an lsl again, you'll see I have a new owner for that file, Travis. And if I want to change the owner and the group, I can simply do Travis colon, whatever the group name is, Travis Media. So we can run that again, but this time instead of Travis, we'll do colon Travis Media. This updates the group as well. So LSL, and you see here that I have the user of Travis in the group of Travis Media now. Now the other command you need to know is chmod, which stands for change mode. But in order to understand this, we gotta look at the Linux numbering system. Now the way they do this is binary, but most of us understand it like this. A read gets four, a write gets two, and an execute gets one. Now what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our file permission here. If we go by that scoring system, then an RW would get four and two, which is a six for the owner. The group also gets a six, and everyone else gets a four because they just have read privileges. So this file permission is a 664. Now in order to change this to something else, like let's say we wanna add the execute privilege for the owner and group, we simply run chmod, the number we want it to be, and then the file name. So chmod 774 file name. Let's try it. So this main.py, let's do sudo chmod, and we wanna change it to 774, and then the file name, main.py. Run this. And now you see we have RWX because we added the execute for the owner. We have RWX, which adds the execute for the group. And then the read stays the same. And in our example of the directory, we have RWX, which is gonna be seven, RWX, which is gonna be seven also, and then RX, which is four plus one is five. 
So this is a 775. Now let's say we want to remove the need to execute. We can run chmod 664 file name. And here are some common permissions. A baseline for your file should be 644. And a directory baseline can be 755, meaning the owner can read, write, and execute, and anyone in the group and everyone else can read and execute only. The reason why you want them to execute is to be able to list the files in that directory. And then finally, a key pair, like on AWS, when you create an EC2 instance, you want to lock down this key pair to a 400, which means the owner can only read and no one else can read, write, or execute. So take a few minutes to look around your file system, like CD Etsy. You'll notice that most files have the owner and group as root, which is good. You want them to be protected and only available for a super user. But be sure to plan your own created files and directories accordingly and safely. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.